What's up, Simonics? Welcome to a new vlog episode. And if you are also in home office and looking for the right place to work from, this episode is for you. I usually don't really feel like an expert on any topic, but given the fact that I've been at home, mostly alone, working for myself, during some times with my wife and a little baby at home, I feel like I could share a bit about how to survive home office and that's what we're gonna do today. So if you wanna procrastinate a bit more and waste some more time on this video, this would actually be beneficial for the rest of your day and week and all of the home office days that we will still be at home. Alright, first of all, let's talk about the location of your home office. I'm of course working here 100% of the time, so I got a nice setup right here. If you happen to have a flat or a house with multiple rooms, you should always go to your own room and be just with yourself. If you only have one room, my only recommendation for you is grab some headphones, put in whatever is your favorite music and tune of the world around you. It's hard enough to concentrate at all in home office, especially if you do uh, it for like the first time or the first few weeks. So being with your own thoughts is really important. Try to get a quiet location, get into your own room um, or otherwise in a quiet place in your room and try to shut out really everything that's around you. Since you can now basically work at any time from anywhere if you're in home office, um, the question is when should you actually work? Perhaps your company has some office hours at which you should be available in Slack or for calls or whatever, but if you're pretty much free, it can be kind of hard to actually get up and start to work. So therefore, I would think about your day as you wanna have it. So perhaps you wanna work eight hours, try to schedule those hours, maybe four in the morning and four in the afternoon, find a window where you wanna work, and also um, think about all the other things that you can now do. So perhaps you wanna do sports at home. Usually you might do this after work in the evening, but now you could actually also move this into the front. So perhaps start your day with sport and then start to work. You're free to reschedule your day. You should make it really work for yourself and you should actually also enjoy it a bit. Um, in the past, I really enjoyed going to the gym in the early morning. I would work before going to the gym and afterwards. It's really a nice um, um, break for me to refresh and come back with new energy. These are things that you can incorporate into your day, maybe taking a walk, cooking food, preparing a nice lunch, um, having breakfast, whatever it might be. Plan your day and reschedule it really to what works for you, what you wanna do, and schedule the working blocks around these other things so you have a great day and you really enjoy them. But let's come back also to the work because this is now not only the place where you rage in GTA Online or play World of Warcraft or anything like this. That's a fucking 50 DKP minus! But also the place where you write your code. What works for me really good is having a plan for the week, at least a rough plan. I know if you're in a company, this can be kind of tricky because you don't know uh, how much of the work you will get done on a certain day, but if you can't make a rough plan for the week, you should at least have a plan for the next day. If you're working on something and you finish, then take five minutes and think about the task that you wanna to do tomorrow because this will make it a lot easier um, tomorrow morning when you get up, when you're ready for work. Um, you're not coming here and have no idea where you wanna start, but you come already with the intention, perhaps you're even motivated. Sometimes I'm really fired up by tasks because I know, okay, tomorrow I will create a new vlog or video and I really want to do this. So understand uh, what you're going to do tomorrow can really help to focus and get into the work. Remember where you left off, think about where you want to start tomorrow. And once you tomorrow think, oh, I don't want to work, you think, oh, well, maybe I can go and fix uh, this bug I had yesterday. And you're suddenly more motivated. Just by planning a little bit ahead, you will be more motivated for the task and you will get more done. Now, if you're alone at home and there's nobody around you, it's kind of easy. But 
Uh, during the last one and a half years, I had a lot of time with my wife together at home and then also with a little baby. Especially the second part was hard. The first part was actually good. And what we found out after a lot of struggles in the beginning is that you really need to have boundaries. If my door is closed and I tell them I'm uh, gonna work until 10 a.m. and then I will have a little break and come down, that's exactly what I should do. The rest of your family, whoever is in the house, shouldn't contact you, not even ask for a little thing. They can also write you a message, iMessage, whatever, call, anything like this, but not bump into your office and completely disrupt anything you're currently doing. It really sounds hard, but it is my recommendation if you have a family or even it's just you and your girlfriend or wife, have some boundaries make the other person understand that you're now in working mode, you're not just sitting here and playing, you're now working. And then when you get to work, it's super easy to become distracted. It's easy to become distracted at work, uh, at the office as well. So at home is a lot more, um, well, there's basically nobody controlling you and you can just browse on YouTube and do whatever you want to do and then another hour went by. So if you have problems with this, I really recommend to use uh, either something like a Pomodoro timer or there's a forest app where you can basically grow a tree while not using the phone or something like this. Any kind of app might help you in that situation to just focus on the tasks that you do. Don't use your phone, don't do anything else. Just use the focused time. And also after uh, your focus time, it is really important to take some breaks. Usually in the office, you go whatever to the toilet, you get a new coffee, anything like this. And at home, it's basically the same. But sometimes you might think, oh, I'm not doing enough. Uh, I need to get to eight hours. I need to work more. Uh, everyone thinks I'm not working when I'm at home. Don't stress yourself about this. It's okay to take break. It's okay to go out for a walk. You can still come back and work on this later again. If you're like most parts of the world in a bit of a shutdown situation, this might still take a few weeks and there's no need to stress yourself on a daily level uh, about certain tasks or achievements. Just take it a bit more relaxed. You can and you will get your work done, but you can still take a break. You can still eat something. You can just take a walk. Uh, they're 24 hours in the day and you don't have to uh, make every second and every minute count. Really, just relax a bit. The days are hard enough for everyone. And also something that I uh, am fine with by now, but you might be not because you're used to an office is having social and people around you. The only thing I can recommend to this is actually go a bit onto social media, go into Slack, talk to some people, use FaceTime, make a video call, anything like this in your breaks to connect with other people. It's really easy to feel uh, really alone at home. Uh, on some days I just haven't said a word in like five or six hours if I don't record a video and just I'm just here with myself. After time, this can really feel a bit boring. To counteract to this, just go into social media or anything and on purpose really connect with your friends, colleagues, anyone uh, who you wanna uh, hang out with or just have a five minute call with. It can really help to just, I don't know, get some other ideas um, and really, or if you're not really interested in people, then just be happy that you're now at home and don't have to talk to them anymore. And one final thing that I found really helpful is to monitor my behavior. On some days I'm really motivated, I'm fired up, I'm working all the time. And on other days I find myself, I don't know, cleaning things, then watching a YouTube video from eight years ago and then searching for a song that after a minute I don't really know why I was searching for. Once you recognize this, it's time to pause and ask yourself, okay, I'm doing something that is not really helpful. Why am I doing this? Of course, to procrastinate because you don't want to work. And then also think, okay, what's the work I had actually on my list and understand why you don't want to work on this. So for me, this is usually, I don't really know how to start a video or anything like this. So I just do something else and tell myself I will find some ideas, but I will never find them. It's better to just get started in that case. Monitor your behavior. And when you notice you're watching the uh, 10th video on YouTube that has no relevance to your day or anything work related, then it's really time to pause and think, 
Okay, am I doing the right thing? No, perhaps not. And why am I not doing this? Take a short break and then really start your work. All right, that's it for Simon's home office tips and how to survive home office. If you got any questions, any problems that you notice during your days, how you feel, anything, please leave it in the comments. As I said, I don't really feel like an expert on a lot of topics, but I feel like I've gone through a lot of things that people who now start uh, being more at home for the first time go through. And if I can help anyone with that, that would make me really happy. Have a great and productive week of home office and I will catch you next week like always. So happy coding, Simon. <laughs>